repent. And that's what we need to do as believers in Christ. That's what people who don't believe in Christ need to do and believe in Christ as Savior. <clears throat> Our scripture passage for today is Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 through 4 and 5, which says, Nevertheless, these are the words of Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. To help us to understand this passage even more, the BKC commentary, the Bible knowledge commentary says, in spite of many areas of commendation, the church in Ephesus was soundly rebuked by Jesus Christ. Yet, I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. You have left your first love. The order of words in the Greek is emphatic. The clause could be translated, your first love you have left. Christ, Jesus Christ, used the word agapion, speaking of the deep kind of love that God has for people, unconditional love, devotion. This rebuke contrasts with what Paul wrote the Ephesians 35 years earlier, that he never stopped giving thanks for them because of their faith in Christ and their love, agapen, for the saints. Most of the Ephesian Christians were now second-generation believers, and though they had retained purity of doctrine and life, and had maintained a high level of service, they were lacking in deep devotion to Jesus Christ, deep love to Jesus Christ. And that's how so many of us are today, whether you want to accept it or not. The truth of the matter is many people in the church today do not love Christ as they used to. They have forsaken their first love. They have left their first love. And that's what's wrong with the church today. A whole lot of activity, a whole lot of innovation, and many are holding strong to the fundamentals of the faith, but no devotion, no love for Christ. And when you don't have love for Christ, you're not willing to sacrifice. You're not willing to serve him in the way that you should and serve others in the way that you should. And Jesus knows it. Uh, you're not uh, willing to endure until the end. You're more concerned about yourself and what you want and what you can get out of this wicked world. How the church today needs to heed this same warning. But I believe that we're past this. I believe that we had the warning. We ignored the warning. 
we rebelled against the warning and we're way past this. And it should not be the case, but it is. We have left our first love and I believe that uh, Jesus Christ has vomited up much of the church with the evil and the foolishness and the sin that is in the church that even people in the church are disgusted with. Some Christians are rightfully disgusted with themselves. That orthodoxy and service are not enough. We need to be we need to understand that. Having the right doctrine and service is not enough. Christ wants true believers' hearts as well as their hands and heads. It's not enough to gather together, and I, I addressed this on yesterday publicly, worldwide. We've got some important meetings, gatherings happening tomorrow. And see, we as uh, modern-day Christians, we love gatherings. We love events. You know, uh, the truth of the matter is much of the church is, is, um, <clears throat> today is given over to events. <clears throat> we get all excited about conferences, other kinds of events, comedians coming to the church, clowns coming to the church. Uh, you know, Saturday of fun where everybody comes out for eating and food and and for uh, dunking the past in the water and all kinds of foolishness. We love it. See, and see, I know this. I know that the church today, that we love events and and gatherings like this because we think that we're doing something. But the truth of the matter is, and I, I lovingly tried to remi remind people yesterday that, uh, and it's still up today, that we really do not need to gather at this point. We just need to humble ourselves and pray and repent. Uh, seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways and repent and get back to Jesus Christ, our first love. And that's what we need to do. We can do that at home. But, you know, we, we love to do things. We love to have events. We love to go places and gather together and act like we're doing something. And But I told, I, I made it very clear that if, if we really don't humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face and repent, and turn from our wicked ways, everybody, and get back to Jesus Christ with uh, our first love and do the first works. Uh, all of that's going to be done and come to naught. And this plague is going to continue. And a whole lot of other evil things are going to continue until we in the church get serious. And uh, we should have never gotten God started. But since he is started, he's going to finish it. And if we don't get serious real quick, and in the words of Leonard Ravenhill, stop playing and start praying for real with uh, fruits of repentance in our lives. It's going, that hypocrisy is going to a fuel this judgment against the church and against the once greatest country in the world. And don't be shocked in the future if we don't repent uh, uh, that China and Russia will be over here training us how to speak Chinese and Russian. Is that serious? I know you think, well, because of our great might, uh, our mighty army and military, that that will never happen. Uh, don't uh, delude yourself. 
God has destroyed countries bigger and more powerful than we are and older than we are. Christ, Jesus Christ, wants believers' hearts as well as their hands and heads. The Ephesians were first reminded to remember the height from which you have fallen. They were told to repent and to return to the love they had left. Similar exhortations concerning the need for a deep love for God are frequently found in the New Testament. Christ stated, Jesus Christ stated, that one's love for God should be greater than his love for his closest relatives, including his wife, father, mother, son, and daughter. Paul added that love for God should even be above one's love for his own mate, spouse. And it should be. In fact, you can't be a good wife or a good husband if, you, if your love is not that way. I know it will shock some of you, but it's true. If Christ is not first, if God is not first in your marriage, you don't have a marriage worth anything anyway. It's not worth anything at all, really. And, 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 and it's, it'll never be as fulfilling as it should be without Jesus Christ being first. And I know that there's some uh, women and some men who want their spouse to love them above even Jesus. Uh, but that is foolishness. Because Jesus is the one who gave you the spouse and the children, by the way. Don't get all caught up in what your little family that they, they, they're so uh, important and so wonderful. You make them into idols and start worshiping them instead of the God who gave you them. That's foolishness. And you better lovingly hold everybody loosely because everybody's not going to be around forever. Death is coming. Death beds are coming. Tragedy is coming to your family, to my family, just like all other families. And that's why you need to pray the prayer, God, prepare us for good days and bad days. Prepare us for celebrations and tragedies. Prepare us for weddings and funerals. Prepare us, Lord, for life and death, because all that's coming in your life and you need God to be there with you to carry you through it and Dr. Uh, Charles Haddon Spurgeon said expect tribulation in this life expect trouble saint of God do not delude yourself you will have tribulation and you will have trouble and you will have difficulties in this life and you better trust in the Lord and Obey him and follow him. Get back to your first love. In calling the Ephesian believers to repentance, Jesus Christ was asking them to change their not only their actions, but their attitude. See, really, this is a repentance of attitude. And one of the biggest problems in the church is the attitude of the people, the spirit the attitude of the spirit uh, of the people, their mindset. This is the biggest problem, right? I see. God wants us to repent of our bad attitudes towards Him. And if you have a bad attitude towards God, and you have a bad attitude towards Jesus, and you have a bad attitude towards His work, you, and you got a bad attitude towards your own family members, you in, you're in a bad state. And God wants you to repent of their bad attitude, as well as their affections. They were to continue their service, not simply because it was right, but because they loved Jesus Christ first and foremost. He warned them that if they did not respond in the way that he was telling them, the light of their witness in Ephesus would be extinguished. 
would be extinguished. I will remove your lampstand from its place. And God does remove local churches. He has done so in the past many times if they refuse to do what he has told them to do. For he is the head of the church. Make no mistake about it. He is the head of the church. Make no mistake about it. Uh, I have a bug bugging me for some reason. The church continued and was later the scene of a major church council. But after the 5th century, both the church and the city declined. The immediate area has been uninhabited since the 14th century. So the words of Jesus Christ came true, as always. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Leonard Ravenhill said, Unctionized by the Spirit's might, John cried, Repent, and they did. Repentance is not a few hot tears at the penitent form. It is not emotion or even remorse or reformation. Repentance is a change of mind and heart, attitude and action about God, about sin, and about hell. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for what our ears have already heard and our hearts have felt and our minds have contemplated. And Lord, I pray that you would help us all who name the name of Christ, no matter how we might feel or what we think. Lord, to take heed to your holy word by your grace by your help and by the power of your Holy Spirit. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us all of our sins, our faults and our failures, and help us, Lord, to repent of our sins and to change our mind, and not only our minds, but our attitudes and our actions. Lord, have your Holy Ghost to intervene and to help us to do so. For we are reminded by your holy word, it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. If anything good is going to happen, it's going to come only through you. As your servant Charles Spurgeon said, it's all of grace. And we pray that you would demonstrate the power of your Holy Spirit in working in our lives as believers. We pray that you would restore us again, renew us again, and revive us again. And Lord, we pray that your Holy Ghost would not give people rest until they come to know your Savior before it is eternally too late. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the briefing news. According to the Brainerd Dispatch, an unidentified rural minister, or rather, According to the Brainerd Dispatch, an unidentified rural Minnesota church that held a funeral service had been linked to 50 cases of the coronavirus plague. I share this news with you because many people are getting the coronavirus plague at church. Many thousands have done so and many thousands have died. So this is nothing to play with. This is no joke. I don't care where you want to gather. You don't need to do that. I don't care if it's at a church, at a library, at a bar, at a restaurant, at a football game, at a convention meeting, uh, a political rally, I don't care where it is, I don't care where it is, you ought not to do that 
at this time if you want to survive this uh, plague. Right here behind you. Give him that, and you and and if you can, give her what you have. Give it to her to give it to her. Y'all switch right here. Give her that if you can, yeah. And give that to her. Give that to her. No, 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 not not yours. Give her the one he just gave her. Just give it to her. No, you got to keep that plug. You got to keep it plugged up. Now give it, give her right here. Right here. Give her what you have and give it to him. That what you have has to stay plugged up. Give a give her the plug, but you just dropped it. There you go. Take that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as we uh, continue, as uh, we're dealing with some technical difficulties, according to the Daily News, the Promise Church in Woodland, Washington, switched to online-only worship services last weekend after positive coronavirus cases were reported in at least 13 of its member households. And they did the right thing. And what I'm telling you is don't wait till that happens because you need to understand this is not something you want to recover from. This is something you want to avoid. And God in his mercy and love is giving you an opportunity to do so. Stay away from crowds. I don't care if you're white, black, red, or yellow. And, and, and for the church, it is absolutely unnecessary to meet at the church. That's, that's not, you're, not, you're not being super faithful and obedient. The church can meet online. If Dr. Phil can meet with his crowd every day on Zoom with, I think, 100 people live, then the church can do it just as good, if not better, and the, and the worship and the fellowship will be just as sweet. And the delivery of the word and everything else. When you have to shift and you have to transition, you just have to do it. Don't, don't play games. And some of you people trying to play these political games. I don't I don't know what I don't know what I don't know what they told you, I don't know how much money they paid you or whatever, but you need to leave that alone because people's lives are at stake. And you don't want to be responsible in your conscience and in your mind for being responsible for somebody dying because you wanted them to be at the church building with you when the only somebody who should be at the church building is you. And they can hear you. And if they're faithful enough to come out to the building in a pandemic, plague, pandemic, they're faithful enough to listen to you at home. And if they have any money, they'll give. And support the work. According to... Kilo Land Media, the South Dakota Health Department announced on Wednesday that someone who attended an event at Faith Family Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, tested positive for the coronavirus plague. According to the Wichita Eagle, 19 coronavirus cases have been linked to Mending Place Church an apostolic church, apostolic faith tabernacle in Wichita, Kansas. I'm sharing this with you to, so that you can make the right decision 
uh, and the and the right decision is to stay home and hear the word of God and the singing and worship at home with your family until this is over, if it ever gets over. By the way, there are many people saying right now, as I predicted months ago, that even if the plague ended today, they're not going back to the church building. They're going to stay. They're going to stay with online worship. And there's nothing wrong with that. As long as, long as you're there and you're in attendance, it can be just as real, if not more real. Certainly more intimate. According to the Auburn Citizen, 19 coronavirus cases have been linked to Emmanuel Baptist Church, Emmanuel Baptist Bible Church in Martville, New York. If the church would hurry up and repent, then we can get back to a more normal situation. But see, as long as see, God is not interested in the church meeting, if you're going to just play and not pray, seek his face, turn from your wicked way, repent him, the Lord Jesus Christ. This play, you need to understand, people, is against the church. The government is not fighting you. They're trying to fight the plague. That's killing people. You have not felt it yet because nobody has died in your family. But once you somebody dies in your family, you're going to realize this thing is real and you're going to uh, uh, take seriously when people say, this thing is real. Don't. This is nothing to play with. I don't care. I don't know how many people I've heard say that. This is nothing to play with. This thing is real. So just stay away from it until God sees fit to pull the plague up. Do not be foolish. According to WVVA News, Legacy Church in Daniels, West Virginia, has temporarily closed their doors after three church members tested positive for the virus. And by the way, if the governor of Virginia and his wife can get the virus, and the mayor of Atlanta and her husband can get the virus and their children, who are you? You can get it too. This thing jumps from people to people, to person to per person, rather. Okay, so now this is nothing to play with. According to WCHS News, Sissonville Community Church in Kanawha County, West Virginia, will be closed for in-person services the next two weeks after some of its members and visitors tested positive for the coronavirus plague. Be wise as a serpent, children. Wise as a serpent. Don't be foolish. According to the Washington Post, since the start of school, 3,445 Texas students reported positive coronavirus tests. Don't go to school either, young people. I know you want to get out there and mix it up. I know you are addicted to it, that social, the social climb. Uh, but you don't need to go to the dorm. You don't need to go to the university campus. Some people right now, some students are mad at the university administrators because they opened the dorm. They wanted the dorms open. They wanted the campus open. They opened it, and the children went, and now they're locked. They're locked on campus until Christmas, if not longer, because they can't go home. Even Dr. Fauci is telling everybody, 
if you're sick at the college, if you got, if you have been infected, or you have been uh, 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 close to people who have, stay where you are. Stay where you are. Don't go back home where you came from. So you should have stayed home. Like the smart students who stayed home. And they are going to class online, and guess what? You on campus, and, and you know what you're doing? You're going to class online because the teachers don't want you to come into the class. Why? Because y'all act very foolishly. Don't get mad at me. Going, having parties in dorm rooms, having parties, secret parties, and all this kind of foolishness because you don't understand how serious this matter is. Not only that, Parents sending their children to schools, uh, and to elementary schools and other schools, that has not worked out. Many schools have shut down, and every, most students are going online. An additional 2,850 school employees tested positive. According to NPR, there is an average of 230 coronavirus cases per 100,000 students and 490 per 100,000 staff members. So stay home is the, K, is, the, is the advice that I'm giving you. Stay home until this is over and uh, if, it is, if it ever gets over. But you need to make different, some, some different plans uh, until this is over. Uh, if you want to survive this, uh, understand that uh, right now, even now, over a thousand people are dying a day. And they predict that over 3,000 people will be dying a day by December. So this is no joke. This is nothing to play with. This is something to take serious. Be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Now, for those of you who are uh, head of households and married couples and single people who you have uh, to pay rent or you have to pay um, a mortgage, if you have lost your job, you don't have mortgage money, you don't have rent money. And contrary to what the government is saying, they will evict you. They will foreclose upon you. And they will act like they never heard of any, any, anything from the government. They, they will have a strange look on their face. And they'll start putting your stuff out on the street if you don't move. If you don't have rent money... If you don't have mortgage money, I'm not talking to rich people. I'm talking to uh, middle-income people and poorer people. You need to move into something that you can handle, something that you can afford to avoid that scene and be more comfortable with your family, meaning you're not in a shelter somewhere and you have your own place to stay and you have a place to operate from. So you can buy off-grid housing from farmflip.com. Farmflip was created and is managed by former land brokers and features one of the largest sources of land listings, land buyers, and land professionals from across the nation. Next, another alternative, you can buy mobile homes from Palm Harbor Homes. You can buy a Palm Harbor Home cash money for about $29,000. Okay, so that means that if you sell your house and you have equity of $35,000, you can buy a house, not, not in the kind of house you're living in now, but buy a place to stay, a place to live, a place to eat at, a place to go to the bathroom at, a place to do your business at, a place to operate from, yes, from a place that you never thought you would buy a house from, a home from. I know you didn't. You never wanted to live in a trailer again. You were raised in a trailer. We understand that. 
but uh, when the situation changes, you have to change. For for and, and for a used double wide or modular home or single wide, you can get into something for about ten to twelve to fifteen thousand. You pay for that if you got thirty thousand dollars equity. You pay for that cash, then you got fifteen thousand dollars in the bank. Guess what you do with that? You pay your utilities, and uh, you pay. Uh, you're able to buy the, the food you want to buy from the grocery store instead of uh, driving up to a uh, food shelter line and get a box that may last you one day because they don't know how y'all eat. Palm Harbor Homes is one of the nation's largest builders of manufactured homes and modular homes. You can find motor homes. This, this is the third alternative. Motor homes, RVs, that means a travel trailer. A fifth wheel is very popular nowadays. It's like a like a house on it's like a house on wheels. Staircases and everything else. Okay, at CampingWorld.com, the nation's largest RV dealer with over twenty-seven thousand RVs and campers for sale. This may be temporary; it may not be. But there are many people who sell their houses once they reach a certain age. They sell their house, buy a motorhome or an RV. Um you know, a travel trailer or a fifth wheel or a motorhome, pay for that cash, and then they go go travel and go places. Some people just go to some to some wonderful place and they stay there, some resort area, and they just stay there. And they pay a little bit to live. And uh, wherever they go, however, their house is with them. And that's a good feeling. You can buy tiny houses from Ulrich Log Cabins at ulrichlogcabins.com. Okay, that, that's that's the next option. RV is the third uh, third option, and this is the uh, tiny houses. The quality of workmanship and materials that goes into each Ulrich cabin continues to distance Ulrich log cabins from any competition. Okay? I told you from the outset, from the get-go of this plague, that I would help you with the home family life, the home church life, the home school life, and the home business life. God has uniquely prepared, uniquely prepared me for that and our family because we've done all of that over the past uh, three decades plus, over 33 years. And it's not easy, but it can be done through Christ and with the help of God. And so, however, I'm not helping you in this particular briefing with all of that. My focus right now is homeschooling. We homeschooled all of our children from the time they were born until they graduated from college. And we have some still in college now. And so I highly recommend it. I've been telling people to homeschool for years, and now you have to. And so we want to encourage you in that area today. I am encouraging you in other areas, such as the family and home worship and, and all of that uh, in our other uh, service, Standing Between the Living and the Dead. And you can hear and listen to those podcasts anytime you want. Um, the International Connections Academy Review. We're doing that today for your benefit from the homeschoolmom.com. Please write down that website. She can help you. Uh, International Connections Academy is a K-12 online private school that students attend from home. International Connections Academy brings a fully accredited U.S. education directly to your family's door <clears throat> anywhere in the world. 
Okay? No matter where you are. They can reach you. How to choose the best homeschool curriculum, part three. Interest-led learning. If your child has a strong interest or does not respond well to typical school work, you may want to try interest-led learning. You can choose resources that support the uh, interest and uh, that might not include choosing a formal homeschool curriculum. Grade levels, you may want to know what homeschoolers think about how a child's grade level affects curriculum choice and when grade level uh, may matter most. Homeschool children frequently learn at different grade levels for different subjects and there is more freedom to help them at the level where they are rather than the level they should be or would be in a public school uh, situation. Okay, so there's a whole lot of flexibility uh, when you homeschool your children. For example, if they're not uh, quick in math, you can spend more time with that and, uh, and focus their attention on uh, the math that they need uh, to do well in life and so forth. So anyway, dear friends, let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for what you have done, what you're doing, and what you will do. Thank you, Lord, for uh, your holy word, Lord, for the expounding of your holy word to help us to deal with the real problem in our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our spirits. And Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for uh, reminding us of how we need to carry ourselves in these dangerous and perilous times. And thank you, Lord, for helping us to focus in on what we need to do as far as our next move is concerned. Uh, because we don't know how long this is going to last. Nobody knows. Only you know. And it may last for five years. And to you, that's like five minutes. To people down here on earth, that's like an eternity to go through this. But, Lord, I still pray that you will be thorough with us, and you are. I pray that you would break us and make us and mold us to be what you would have us to be. Lord, you already know that we're not ready, and I'm just a mere human being, and I know we're not ready. We're not ready for this plague to uh, disappear because we're not willing to do what you told us to do in the church. We're not willing to humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways and repent and get back to you, our first love. We're just not. Generally speaking, and there's still sin going on in the church uh, right now. And thank you, Lord, for revealing some of it already, exposing some of it. Lord, continue to do that so that we will be willing to humble ourselves and repent and change by your grace and by the power of your Holy Spirit and because of your love. Save now those who are lost. Revive those who are saved. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are with us today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and the free pardon of your sins, allow me to show you how you can place your faith and trust in Him for your soul's salvation from the power of sin and the punishment of sin in that awful place called hell 
for it will be forever if you die today and you have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ in a saving sense. So first, dear friend, please understand with me that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. You have and I have. So has the Pope, so has the Dalai Lama, and so has Joel Osteen. We all have sinned against God. For the Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So please understand that because of our sins, we deserve punishment in that awful place called hell. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. This includes physical death and spiritual death. In physical death, the body goes to the grave. In spiritual death, the soul goes to hell to spend eternity if it has not believed in Jesus Christ, if that person has not believed in Jesus Christ. And hell is a very real place. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than any prophet, any preacher, any apostle, or any writer in the Bible. He did. He preached more on hell than he did about heaven. And when he described hell, he said that one time that... Uh, Hell is a place where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. At another time, he said, Hell is a place where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. So hell is a very real place. Hell is bad news. But I have some good news for you. The same Jesus Christ who preached more on hell than anybody else in the Bible said these marvelous words, the greatest words ever spoken, the words of good news in John 3.16 when he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The phrase, for God so loved the world, means that if you are in this world, God loves you. No matter what you have done in life, God loves you. No matter who you are or who you committed the sin with. The next phrase, that he gave his only begotten Son refers to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who never committed a sin in word, thought, or deed, who went about doing good throughout his life, never did anything wrong, worked miracle after miracle, and then he chose to suffer, bleed, and die on the cross for our sins was buried and rose again as he is the Lamb of God who has taken away the sin of the world according to John the Baptist. He did that for you and for me. He is God's Son who suffered, bled and died on the cross for your sins and for mine. And he was buried and rose on the third day. Our next phrase is that whosoever believeth in him. The word whosoever means anybody at any time, red, yellow, black, or white, rich or poor, educated, uneducated, anybody means anybody. Whosoever will means anybody at any time. The phrase believeth in him means to trust in him, to depend upon him to rely on him or to have faith in him for your soul's salvation. That's it.
There's nothing about in church to get saved. It says nothing about joining a church, becoming a member to be saved or to get saved. It says nothing about uh, getting baptized to get saved. It says nothing about giving any money to the church or serving in the church to get saved. All you have to do to get saved from hell and to heaven is to believe in Jesus Christ. Just just do what Jesus told you to do. For whosoever believeth in him, he was talking about himself, should not perish. And that leads us to our next phrase. Should not perish. Perish where? Perish in hell. This refers to eternal punishment in a place called hell. It is real, dear friend. And you need to avoid it like the plague. You need to avoid it like the plague. And lastly, the phrase, but have everlasting life, means live eternally in heaven with God. The Holy Bible says in Romans 10, 9, and 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, and thou, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's very simple, nothing difficult. None of the religious talk that you hear about in churches today, that you must do this, you must do that. Just simply believe in Christ, call on his name, ask him to save you, and he will. If you are believing in your heart right now, pray this prayer with me. It's called the sinner's prayer, and mean it from your heart. Repeat after me phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I have done evil in your sight. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, who suffered and uh, bled and died on the cross for my sins, was buried and rose on the third day by your great power. Lord Jesus, please, I welcome you into my heart and into my spirit. Please come into my heart and into my spirit and save my soul from the hell I deserve. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins and to turn from my evil life and to follow you in the new life, Lord Jesus. For it is in your name, Lord Jesus, I do pray. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ that he suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose on the third day, allow me to say to you congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my book titled What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. And Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. And dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, Please email us at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com or whatever email address is on your platform and let us know. 
we have some free material that we want to send you to help you to grow in the faith and be the Christian that God wants you to be. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Until next time, my beloved, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good is our prayer. If the Lord should tarry his coming and we live, we'll be back here tomorrow, uh, Saturday morning at 11 o'clock uh, Eastern, 10 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Pacific. And if you don't see us exactly on time, just hang around. We'll be there by the grace of God. God bless you, dear friends. Until next time, let's all stand for our closing prayer. Holy Father God in heaven, we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor for what you have done, for what you're doing, and for what you will do. Thank you for reminding us from your holy word that it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And Lord, we pray that the power of your Holy Ghost would work mightily in our lives and from here uh, in the lives of people who believe in you uh, for revival. Uh, help us to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways, to repent and get back to you, Lord Jesus Christ, our first love. And then, Lord, we know that once we do right by you, you will heal us and heal our land because you love us more than we love ourselves. And uh, you love us so much that you're not going to let us continue in our evil ways. And I thank you for that. And Holy Father God, we pray that your Holy Ghost would cover this nation and this world like a blanket, convicting people of their sins breaking their hard hearts and uh, turning their eyes towards you for salvation. And Lord, we pray that uh, you, you, your Holy Spirit would draw them to yourself as your word.